My name is Mohammed Ali Omar. I'm from the Davis and Shatliff Water Treatment Group Support. I'm a water treatment engineer by profession. Now, today we're going to learn about uh, how a reverse osmosis works and what it's used for. A reverse osmosis system is used for separation of uh, high saline water to get water that is good for drinking and other domestic purposes or even for industrial purposes or for hospital applications. Now, from what you're seeing here, this is a simple uh, setup for our daily reverse osmosis system where we have the pre-filtration unit. It contains of a media fil filter unit and then we have the anti and dosing unit. Then we have the controls here for the whole system where we monitor the flows and then we have the pressure gauges where we monitor all the pressures for the system while the system is running. And lastly here, we have our digital controls here to make sure that you have the right parameters for the right application. Starting with how, this, uh, how the system works, we have the feed pump. Now this feed pump, it gives flow to the system. It, it ensures that the system always has a constant flow. And then we have the high pressure pump. Now the high pressure pump gives the pressure to the system. Once we have the high pressure, that's when you have the salt separating from the raw water. And then you get your permeate water. Now permeate water is uh, your treated water. So whenever you hear that terminology, that means it's treated water. From what you're seeing here, as the water goes through the feed water, it gives, uh, it gives a constant flow to the high pressure. Once the flow is constant enough, then the high pressure pump kicks in. From this point, we have a stainless steel uh, inlet. Now this stainless steel is because to handle the high pressure and even the high salinity of the water. Now from this point, this is where you have the water inlet and then we have the separation taking place. Now these small membranes, these are the four inch membranes. For bigger systems, we're going to have larger types of membranes. So the water gets separated all the way to the end and then we get the permeate water from the blue line. As you can see here, the, the blue line is where you have the permeate water, which is also the treated water. Now down here, where you have the gray line, this is where you have the waste water. This waste water, it goes to the west, to the French drain, however you want to use it. In some cases, we even recycle the waste water if it doesn't have so, so much high mineral content. What we have here, we have a microfilter. Before we have water going through the membranes, we need to have this microfilter. This does from 5 micron to up to 0 0.1 micron. Before water goes through it, we need to filter, make sure the water does not have any silt. If you have silt in the membranes, it causes clogging and fouling. And once we have that, then we won't have the right flow output for the plant. Another important aspect for the reverse osmosis system is the anti scalant dosing. Now we have the anti scalant doser here. The anti scalant it prevents the membranes from clogging. So to prevent the scaling of the membranes, we need to dose the anti scalant. And here we have a knob. Now this knob is what we adjust on the amount of anti scalant we want to dose. The higher the amount of salt concentration, the higher the amount of anti scalant we need to dose. Now from here we have the sanction line and then we have the delivery line. Now from the delivery line, you see that we dose the anti scalant even before the microfilter, such that in case we have any particles, it, it, gets, it gets removed by the microfilter. Now the reverse osmosis controller, this shows how much the, T, the, the TDS for the permeate. TDS stands for total dissolved solids. Now this, gets, this helps you to monitor how much, uh, how much source of your water has been reduced from your raw water. All this light indicates green in color. When you have green lights indicated, it means your system is working perfectly. Whenever you have a problem in your system, we are going to have a red light. The next in, the, in, in controller, we have the TDS feed meter. TDS is total dissolved salts meter. Now this helps us monitor the, the concentration of your salt that is coming through your system. If this changes, that, that means you are going to have a different output in terms of the concentration in salts. Then what we have is a pH meter. This helps us get to know if we need to adjust the pH after the treatment or before the treatment. And lastly, we have the ORP meter. ORP stands for oxidation reduction potential. Now this meter is used to monitor the amount of chlorine levels that, is, that are going through the system. So whenever you have uh, water that is chlorinated, this ORP meter helps us monitor if the chlorine levels are acceptable to the membranes or not. If the chlorine levels are higher, the ORP meter shuts down the machine to protect your membranes. Since we understand how the system works, now it's very important to know how to maintain the system and how to observe if the system is working perfectly. Now what we have here, we have the permeate flow meter, you see it labeled here. Now the permeate flow meter, it, it shows us how much, water we are, how much clean water we are getting. And then we have the recycle flow meter. From the recycle flow meter, this shows how much, how much concentrate water you want to recycle. 
Sometimes uh, if your water is too saline, we do not even recycle at all. But if the water quality is not that bad, we may need to recycle some of the water to save some energy and to save, to save some cost in pumping the water. And lastly, we have the concentrate flow meter. Now the concentrate flow meters, this, is, this shows how much water goes to waste. Now all this is going to depend on the recovery of your system. For example, if your recovery of your system is, is at 50%, that means if I feed in 1,000 liters, and then I'm going to get 500 liters of clean water and 500 liters of waste water. So all this depends on how your water quality is. Next, something that is very important for us to monitor is the pressures. Now we have the feed pressure. This is given by the feed pressure pump. And then we have the concentrate pressure. This is the difference between the high pressure inlet and, and whatever pressure is lost during the separation. And then we have the high pressure gauge. Now we always have to monitor these three. We always have to have them as constant. From the day you install the plant, once you record the pressure readings, you have to ensure that these constant readings are always constant while the plant is running. Lastly, now what we have from our control system is the iDailyLeaf. iDailyLeaf is our remote monitoring system. It's always installed inside the control panel and you can always monitor the systems remotely. Where the feed pressure has a very high pressure, we need to use high pressure filters as the pretreatment. Now, the type of media you put in here will depend on how your water is. We have sand media, we have glass media, we have anthracite media, and we have activated carbon media. The choice of your media will depend on the quality of your raw water. Now, for instance, where you have very sensitive water and your water has high amount of seals, your water has high amounts of suspended solids, or your turbidity is quite high, we, need, we use the ultra filtration units. They do a filtration of up to 0.01 micron. So it does a very, this is a very premium product and gives the best results compared to a media filter that does up to 20 micron. What we have here, this is a larger, a larger version of the reverse osmosis system. This does up to 10,000 liters per hour. Meaning now for larger flows, we need larger filters. The one that we saw earlier were four inch membranes. Now these are eight inch membranes. All these are arranged in series to give you better water quality in terms of your permeate water. The technical aspect of it does not change. We still have the same type of system where we have the feed pump, we have the microfiltration systems before the water goes through the membrane. And as we mentioned earlier, we also have the, the stainless steel part on the feed water. This is very important so that it can handle the high pressure and even it can handle the high corrosivity of the water in terms of salinity levels. This is the control system, what you have here, with the control panel, where we, we still have the same gadgets to monitor the conductivity, to monitor the total dissolved solids, and to monitor the chlorine levels. We all know that chlorine can damage the membranes. If you, if you have chlorine in your raw water, or you have the, a residual effect of it, we need this meter to ensure that no chlorine is going through the membranes and affecting the, your system. Coming up here, we, you see that we have a high pressure pump, which is much bigger. And lastly, what we have here, we have a chemical tank. Now we use this tank to, to, in two ways. We can use it to flush off the system to avoid the buildup of, of scales in the system. And we can also use this during maintenance called CIP, clean in place system. In the process of CIP, we mix our chemicals here, run it through the system and descale the plant. Davis and Shatliff Water Treatment Department gives us different solutions for a different water quality. From the pre-treatment of the ultra filtration, media filtration, to the reverse osmosis. Even from the reverse osmosis unit, we have different sizes. From smaller plants to larger capacity plants for water treatment solutions. So Davis and Shatliff got you covered in all your water treatment needs.